G'day Bob. Hey, thanks mate for your videos. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed them and I appreciate them. Oh, excuse me, having a cup of coffee. And, um, mate, thanks for the head, heads up about local Malays and so forth. Uh, with their attitude towards foreigners. I, mate, I can understand that. Um, and I would bargain to say it comes back from the old colonial days. A little bit of Dr. Mahart here thrown in with that as well. Um, mate, I did live there for two and a half years. I, I understand quite well. Uh, but I know plenty of Australians as well as you do that don't like Asians uh, for various reasons. But I'm not one of them. So, quite frankly, you, you come across moon bats wherever you go. Uh, but thanks anyway, Bob. Uh, I appreciate your warning of that and the heads up. But I want to get back to those videos, mate. Particularly the one of Hanoi. They remind me of so many different places. Uh, I've never been to Hanoi, and nor have I been to Vietnam. One day, I probably will. Probably go to Saigon. <laughs> I know it's called Ho Chi Minh City, Bob, but to me it'll always be Saigon. It's like Burma. I can't call it Miramar. Um, to me it's always Burma. Uh, you know, but when you showed me a video yesterday about you outside your apartment place and you said, Oh, it's, it's bucket and rain, this is what it's like, blah, blah, blah. It's Saturday afternoon, it's pouring down rain. Bob, that's the monsoon. I know where Singapore is. I know it's coming up the monsoon period in Singapore. I know that. Mate, I've, I've lived through monsoonal weather before. Uh, two and a half years of it. I also got caught up in it last year, coming home from Penang last year. Um, Make a long story short, we got we were supposed to board the plane at Penang around about eight o'clock and bone leapers. Get in the Singapore airport about eight uh, about nine o'clock. Flight home at ten past twelve. Well that was the plan. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. <laughs> because of cancel flights and so forth. In, in Singapore itself. Uh, but I travel with Singapore Airlines a lot and I enjoy them because they, they do look after us. And that night, coming home, they put me up in the, the Changi Gardens. And I'm glad they did because, um, uh, quite frankly, you know what the weather's like up there. And uh, I enjoyed the, the relaxation of a bed. And also... Being able to have a shower. <laughs> yes, definitely. They pay for the hotel and a taxi to and from the airport. That was Singapore Airlines. And by the time I got home, it was about I was about um, 12 hours late getting home. And that's a story all of its own. <laughs> uh, just about to land at, at Brisbane. Uh, this woman was... Apparently was sick on the air, aeroplane. I don't know what was wrong with her. I, I didn't ask. And it was not my, my place to ask. But when customs came through, as they normally do in a situation like that, we're just about to get off. When this customs bloke nearly stepped on this box of chocolates, I bought it at Changi Airport for my wife. And she would have loved that, but I just pulled them away quickly enough. Uh, finally, we got off the aeroplane and I got home. And that was just last year. Uh, thanks, monsoon weather. Uh, it was a fantastic trip home. Not. <laughs> uh, but when I was in Penang, and by the way, when I was... Uh, and I, I came home from Penang when I was about 15, Bob. So I was in my formative teenage years in Penang. And by the way, Malaysia has left a, a lasting impression on me. Uh, so I'm well aware of the cultural areas. And I enjoy it still. Even though some moon bats won't like Westerners, that's 
you know, I'm not going to see me retire up there to please them. I can't do that, Bob. I'm not going to anyway. But uh, I'm well aware of it. But I do have other Malaysian uh, mates and friends and so forth, Chinese, Hindus, and uh, the family of our, our former armour. So, quite frankly, Bob, thanks for the heads up, but, um, but I'll look out for that. Business-wise, mate, I'm retiring in 11 years' time, and I, at this period of time, I'm going to say the silent partner area, I'm not into at the moment or business or anything like that. Um, you can get apartments and so forth around Bata Ferengi and Penang. Uh, they're set up for semi-retirement areas for Westerners, and that's great. That's fantastic. Suits me right down the ground. Medical reasons, other uh, the health reasons up there. They're advertising Malaysia about their their uh, Malaysian health system. I'm not taking advantage of that. It's private health uh, degrees and areas that I probably need when I retire, and that's fine enough by me. <coughs> I'll pay for it and so forth. And that's fine. So, I've covered that one. But the monsoons, mate, I remember them very well. Um, when we were there, in the early 70s, it used to rain down one side of the street, chucking it down with rain. Across the road, dry as a bone. So, um, in fact, we used to have the old electrical cables that run outside on the power poles. And at night they'd be sparking away and all this rain would be coming down. Uh, I arrived in Penang, in Butterworth. The night I arrived there with my parents and so forth, we arrived in this Qantas jet, this old 707. We stopped off at Singapore. Uh, we left Mascot in Sydney. Up to uh, Singapore, we refuelled up there and they fed us. <laughs> they fed us again. We were feeding on the aircraft and we were feeding at the... Um, at Changi. And this was the old days when they used to bring out the old shuttle buses sort of things, like old tram things. They fed us like chooks. And, um, of course, we couldn't eat it. You know, it was just so much. And when the aeroplane finally took off for Butterworth, you could see up in the distance, uh, it was pitch black with clouds and so forth. Arrived in Butterworth, guess what? It was chucking it down rain. <laughs> it was absolutely pouring down. Woke up the next morning in his house that you've seen on the video that I sent you. And um, everything was so green. <laughs> it was, and it's tropical. How would you say? Stench, if you want to put it that way. This tropical smell of the place. And it was, everything was green outside. There was an old paddy field down the back of us. And, um, of course, the RAF used to spray this bloody thing to stop malaria and so forth. And our armour ended up getting malaria. <laughs> so, so <laughs> uh, and these horse tablets about the size of your fist that you had to swallow um, to stop malaria. And they were bitter as anything, mate. But uh, they were good times, mate. They were, they were great times. And not that I'm trying to relive them again, because that's impossible. What I'm looking at is, in the semi-retirement, is to break the, the area that... Instead of retiring full time here in Australia, I'll go up to Penang for six months every year, so to speak, with the wife and myself. She can go home to the Philippines when she decides to do so at any given stage, back to Penang and so forth, either by Kuala Lumpur or direct. And um, for me, that's I like the idea of. Being at Bata Ferengi or someplace like that in Penang, where I can go out, I can have a meal, the wife and I, we can have rice and chips, <laughs> or whatever, sardes and God knows what, and no one bothers you. 
No, it bothers you. Because we're independent people as well, Bob. I'm, I'm very independent. And uh, I got in the strife with my wife when I first went up to Cebu. Uh, this was years and years ago. Uh, the wife met me at the airport, blah, blah, blah. We went back to the hotel. She left to go back to where she lived with her mum and dad. That was fine. I went and had a sleep uh, because I was that tired, jet lag. Woke up the next day. The wife has gone to her workplace, uh, a place called Mactan Island, uh, at the Mets. Uh, which was an industrial estate there at the airport. And um, she works for Timex. It's a, a customs officer sort of thing, you know, deals with um, uh, immigra- uh, Department of Trade and that sort of stuff in the Philippines. Which left me in this hotel room, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do next? Oh, go down and have breakfast. So I had a shower, went down and had breakfast. I grabbed the local map and I'm sitting there reading the damn thing. And, um, oh, okay, I'll go here, go there, blah, blah, blah. So I left the keys at reception, got in a cab and taxi, went here, there and everywhere, come back about oh, six or seven hours later. Tramped my feet off, because I do a lot of walking too, Bob. And um, discovered Cebu and... I was in the Scouts when I was younger and also in the Army and I just orienteered the place and I get landmarks pss, pss, like that. It's, I just do it naturally. I don't know why, I just do. And um, in the meantime, the wife had rung up the hotel and said and asked if I was all right. And they said, oh, he must be, he's gone out. And she, and she said, where's he gone to? And they said, oh, we don't know, he didn't tell us. <laughs> I got back to the hotel room, of course, and the hotel... And she's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> of course, she still does it. And, of course, I just went, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> and uh, uh, she was concerned and worried about me. But that's uh, besides the point. Um, I did that in Manila. I'd just go off. <laughs> just go and have a look around. <laughs> uh, I've done that in Singapore as well. I've done the same thing. Uh, wife's happy. Left her at a shopping centre. Go for it. <laughs> Um, uh, but, um, I like Singapore, that, Bob, I, I do, um, but everywhere else I've been in Southeast Asia, I compared back to Penang and Butterworth. I just do, and that's, that's where I believe I'm supposed to be. And that's where I'm going to be. Um, but Bob, I appreciate you sending me those videos of Hanoi. And also, your apartment building with the swimming pool outside. <laughs> oh, this is my swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Mate, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate that those videos, mate. I really do. And um, you know I've lived up there. You, you can tell. Um, because I speak so much of the places up there. Uh, and I do like Singapore, but I compare it to Penang. If I had a choice, I'd still pick Penang. But if, I, if the case came that I couldn't, then I'd take Singapore as a secondary. And um, why Singapore? Because it's got that cultural area. You got you got the Malays, the Chinese, the Hindus, the same folk. Yeah, and it's just me. Me, I, I can fit in to that area because I was brought up with that third culture idealism that was quite common with kids like myself, blokes like myself, who were who lived up in Malaysia with the RAF and we become third cultural kids. And occasionally, Bob, we even spoke Bahasa Malay. I can still speak a little bit of it, but I've lost most of it. Now I speak more Tagalog and Visayan, they're Philippine languages. 
I remember a little bit of Chinese every now and again. It comes back. And um, different dialects in Chinese because our ama was Chinese. And we got recently got in contact with her too. So her and her husband are, are thinking about retiring back to Penang as well. And he was in the British Army. It's a different story altogether. But um, anyway, Bob, thanks for those videos, mate. I really enjoy them. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Um, mate, I've got a whole series of videos on old video eight about Singapore and Manila and, and Cebu that I, I haven't been able to transfer yet. Um, I will eventually when I think about it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'll talk about I'll talk about that to you later, Bob. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye.